So I'm not quite sure where this channel is going to end up entirely. I have a few things that I want to feature here. Uh, it's probably mostly just going to be a lot of like personal stuff. But I mean, I do kind of want to talk about some of my hobbies and some of my struggles with ADHD and like how I organize my life and plan my things around that in order to be successful because I'm finally getting to a place I feel like where I'm able to be successful and work alongside it instead of just butt heads with it all the time. I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. Um, it's probably going to be a lot of personal stuff, some of my hobbies and some talking about ADHD and stuff like that. Maybe some cleaning of my house and some projects I'm working on. And Anyway, so today I kind of figured I would start off with um, some of my reading because reading for a long time has been a big struggle of mine. Um, I used to love it when I was a kid and when I was in high school. I used to read constantly. I joke about how my first like big person novel, I guess, I read in fifth grade. <laughs> I was... Um, reading alongside all of the other 11 year olds and um, I had Daddy's Little Girl by Mary Higgins Clark which was um, <laughs> not a choice that many of my other classmates were making. I don't know, then I just kind of got into a little bit of a slump. I didn't have a lot of time to read. I had my son when I was 19 and then like becoming a parent and dealing with all of the baby things and toddler things and Finally, once he started to get old enough to go to school, I was able to have some free time back, but then I went and got my job, uh, and I was running a business at the time. My job was working in a library, so I ended up being around books quite a lot at that point, and yet I still wasn't reading very much. Um, it just kind of gave me an excuse to be in the environment around them, <laughs> and, and maybe at some point, like, it would pick back up for me. One of my big goals at work every single year was to read more and to read things that were different than what I had always picked up. And I never really quite got there. <laughs> um, my last year was probably um, the time that I got the closest to that and I was actually the interim director so I didn't even have to set a goal for myself for that year so <laughs> it kind of... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this video is probably going to be pretty long because I'm just going to kind of talk about what got me back into reading finally and then kind of go through quite a lot of the books that I've read over the last year because um, that's when it really picked up for me. I'm kind of hoping to maybe do these like every few months or so at least like maybe seasonally just to keep myself accountable so that I do keep reading because it's definitely something that I enjoy and I want to keep doing. It's just really hard for me to prioritize picking a new book up and getting into another story and I think that's part of my ADHD stuff is that it's very difficult for me to put down a book with characters and a world in it that I loved and then have to pick another one up and get into a whole new story. I really like revisiting the same characters in the same world, which is why I really love series, because I know as soon as I pick up that book that I'm probably gonna be into it if I have read one previously and I've really loved it. If it's an entirely new standalone book, it's very, very difficult for me to get into something, and I tend to put it down if it's not if I'm not getting into it quickly enough. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I have to make time during my day to prioritize that, otherwise I won't do it. Um, there are always things that come up that are more important than me getting to sit down and get the time to read. And that's how it is with everything, though. Like, anything that I want to do personally, it's, there's always something that's more important. Like, there's things that need to be done around the house, or there's things that I need to organize, or there are... Um, things that I need to work on so that like my work goals can get further or whatever. I am I have a really high tendency to make myself feel guilty about taking time for myself when there are other things that need to get done. <laughs> so when I was working at the library, I typically only read like three to five books a year maximum. And so it was really fun when people used to come up to the front desk and ask me about my own reading habits. And I'm sitting there with the knowledge that like I maybe finished three books in the last year and I really don't read very much in my own personal time. But like I love being around the books and I can give them a recommendation based off of things that other people have liked. And 
cataloging the books and reading the descriptions and seeing other people's reviews on them. So I just don't have very much time to read for myself. <laughs> Last October is really when I kind of got out of my slump. Working, working in the library, I tend to avoid things that are like jumping on the bandwagon of something. And um, because I used to do the New York Times compilation for our library that went on our website, I purposely held off on reading Where the Crawdads Sing for ages because it just did not come off the New York Times list. It was out of principle entirely. Like I was not going to read it until like it wasn't so popular that other people were constantly asking for it. And what inevitably ended up being the thing that made me read it was that the movie was coming out, which I never even ended up going to see in theaters, but I wish I would have. <laughs> That was my plan originally was that I was going to read the book so that I could go see it in theaters because people were saying that the movie was really good and I still haven't even seen it yet but anyway I ended up reading that in a day uh, I think maybe two I really did like that one and then directly after that one one of my favorite true crime podcasters Paul Holes um, he ended up releasing a memoir and so I went and I bought it um, I read that one in a couple of days too and then when I was looking through my Goodreads, finally getting back into it after a really long time, I realized that I had probably like 10 books in my currently reading that I had put down and never come back to. So my goal last year was to go back and finish all of the books that I never finished because it drives me nuts to leave anything unfinished. And so um, over the course of like a month, I ended up finishing like five of those books and finally was able to like cross them off my currently reading list. And then after that, I kind of just lost steam. I didn't really touch another book for like two months. So um, I mean, the holidays tend to be busier too, so I don't have as much time to read. But after all of that, I read so much in such a short amount of time and just kind of like stopped doing other things because I was so fixated on reading that I was like, okay, I can't can't do this right now. <laughs> and so in December, one of the YouTubers that I follow, she's actually local to me, she lives about an hour away from me, and she mentioned how she was going to be running a book club out of her shop. And so I was like, you know, this is something that I've been wanting to do anyway. Um, I kind of had a hard time finding one that was reading items similar to what I liked. I really wanted a, an excuse to get myself out of the house. Um, and to meet some new people. Um, I kind of avoid putting myself out into places that make me uncomfortable and I also got my best friend Sarah to want to go too so we ended up starting to go together which was even nicer because then I could meet her at her house and we could drive the rest of the way there and then we'd get like an hour or two to talk every time we went to book club. That's been nice. Uh, I wanted a little bit of accountability from having to have a book finished by a certain time only having a month to read something because like I gotta finish it before we go to book club if I want to be able to talk about it so I've, I've been pretty good there's only been one month that I haven't finished the book before we went that kind of is where things pick back up for me um, it was a little slow going at first but I I have read a lot since then that's mostly when I've been reading since uh, non-stop so I just kind of want to talk a little bit about like each of the things that I read and like how I enjoyed them when I rated them just to give you an idea of like what my reading style is and maybe if you have some recommendations you can give them to me. Although my want to read list on Goodreads is already like 400 items long. It's been a lot of years of working around books constantly while not reading very much and I just kept adding things and never taking anything off. So <laughs> the first one that we did for book club was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I ended up giving this one four stars. I really liked it. It was just very long, so it took a long time to get through, and I ended up having to listen to the audiobook at one point just for like an hour in between a couple of chapters to help me get through it fast enough to where I could um, be finished with it by book club because I needed to be able to multitask because it was taking me quite a while to get through. And then from there, that was right around the time where I'm glad my mom died, got pretty popular. I mean it came out a little bit before that. It was on hold from the library for quite a while so it wasn't until like December or January that I was finally able to get my hands on it at work and I really liked this one but oh it was hard to read. I ended up giving it four stars but 
It's definitely one that you want to stay away from if you've had any issues with like eating disorders or like parental narcissism and stuff like that. It, it's very difficult to read. <laughs> After that, I read um, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Um, he's one of my favorite authors, actually. Uh, I've read most of his books. There was only one up until this past year that I hadn't read yet um, that like wasn't a new release. I really like his books typically, but this one I only gave three stars. It was very odd. I didn't really like this one. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> it was just kind of an out there story. And his typically are books where it's something that you didn't expect. Like usually you go into it thinking it's going to be one thing and it turns out being something different. His books always contain like a big twist for the most part about like where your expectations of where the story is going end up into something entirely different. Like a book you think is going to be fiction mystery ends up being something slightly paranormal or vice versa. Like one of his books is like starts off very paranormal you think the house is haunted and it turns out being a fiction mystery <laughs> so it kind of like turns you on your head uh halfway through uh for a lot of his books this one was like just a little bit more into the supernatural than i expected it to be and i don't know if i liked it he's got a new one coming out so we'll see how i like his next one i've liked pretty much most of the rest of them <laughs> this 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 last one though was was kind of weird and from there, I went to People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I had heard a lot of good things about her, and I was kind of itching to read romance again, but I don't like cheesy romances. Romances have come a long way since I used to read them in high school. Sometimes it's just, it's very hard for me to read a romance if it's like too... Ugh. Um, <laughs> like, I enjoy some steam. But I, I ultimately want something that has an interesting and fun story and is not just like romance for the sake of being romance, you know. Around that time I was tossing up whether to start reading her or Christina Lauren and I decided to pick her because we had a couple of her books at the library. And fun fact, I actually own this book now even though I borrowed it from the library because my cats tore the cover on it while I was reading it and so I had to pay to replace the one that might work, so. <laughs> I really like this one. I've heard people think that this one is like the probably the lowest rated or like the least interesting one of hers but I liked it and I don't know it's probably because I like travel and um that was a big portion of people we meet on vacation obviously and I don't know I just thought the story was very cute um I really enjoyed the characters in that one too so I mean it wasn't my favorite one of hers but it ended up with me reading all of the rest of her books. So the next one that we read for book club was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, I think is how you pronounce the name, I'm not sure. I thought this one was kind of eh. It, I finished it quickly, I only read it within a couple of days. It was interesting at first, but it just ended up being very underwhelming to me. I gave it four stars, but like for the most part, I, eh. like I probably could have given it three stars and not have been upset but <laughs> the next one that I decided to read I wanted something that was going to be a quick read that I could fit in between book club reads because the next one that we were reading was a little bit of a longer one I had read Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina last year and I really liked it so I happened to own another one of her books that I hadn't read yet and um, it's called The Couple Next Door I did not like it <laughs> I did not like it at all the story was kind of not it for me. I didn't like how it ended. I didn't like how you felt reading it, knowing who the probable suspect was, and like the whole <sighs> what people will do to people they love to help themselves is just like gross to me. So I, I didn't like that one. I gave it two stars. <laughs> the next book club read we read was The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot um, by Marianne Cronin. And I ended up missing this book club, so I didn't get to discuss it. But I like this one. Um, it wasn't necessarily a standout book for me, but I thought it was cute. So I gave it four stars. Um, it's about... Uh, I think she's 16, um, a 16 year old with like a terminal illness in a hospital and the people that she meets along the way. She meets an older woman named Margot and they decide that they're going to make a painting 
for every year of their combined lives because together they equal 100 years. So it's like a project that they do while they're in the hospital and all of the patients um, come to enjoy it. That one was not necessarily like anything special to me or anything like that, but I thought it was good. The next one I read was If You Tell by Greg Olson. I had previously read one of his true crime novels about Susan Powell. This one was available on Kindle Unlimited and I had just signed up for the subscription, so I went ahead and read this one. I gave it three stars. It wasn't necessarily bad, it just was kind of disjointed and it's probably because there's so many different people involved in the story. It was a, about a mother who ended up um, abusing her kids and murdering people that lived in their home with them and the story of like how her daughters got away from her and what ended up happening there and it's true crime so it's a true story so I don't know there were also some details within the story that just were awful and so it was kind of hard for me to read even though I typically am a big fan of true crime but from there I needed something a little lighter to read <laughs> So I ended up picking up Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I gave this one four stars. It would have been five stars, but I don't like the like really super cheesy romance stuff. And for the most part, I enjoyed this book and I loved where they left it. And then the epilogue came in and it was just too, too much. It was too much like to where it was almost unbelievable. So that kind of ruined it a little bit for me. But the book overall as a whole, I really enjoyed. It was just the epilogue that kind of like made it a little unrealistic. And so I ended up like, well, I wish you would have just left it at the end and not added the epilogue, but it was fine. I'm just being picky because I don't like super cheesy stuff. But from there for book club, we ended up reading A Court of Thorns and Roses and this was one that I had heard lots of things about, but I'm not typically a fantasy reader and so I hadn't even thought about reading it myself until they brought it up at book club and they were like, oh my gosh, no, it's so good. Like even if you've never read fantasy before, you'll probably like it. And um, I loved it. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite Disney movies, one of my favorite stories. So. When I got into it and realized it was kind of similar to that, it was very easy for me to get through. The further on I got into it, the more interesting it got. I really loved it. I gave it five stars. Immediately went out and bought the second, third, and like the novella that goes in between, I think the third and the fourth one. <laughs> wow, my brain just stalled out. Okay, the only book that was left by Riley Sager that I hadn't read yet uh, became available on Libby, so I ended up downloading it to my Kindle. That was the last time I lied. I ended up giving this one four stars too. This one was a little bit different than I was expecting it to be. Um, it revolves around a summer camp and girls that go missing. Um, and then the summer camp opens back up, uh, I think 15 years later. And then the person that accuses the camp owner's son of the reason the girls go missing gets invited back when the camp reopens as a camp counselor. So that whole time that she's there, she's trying to figure out what actually happened when they when the girls went missing. It's kind of a little bit of a crazy story. Uh, there are lots of things that happened in it that I wasn't expecting. It was pretty good. I gave it four stars. Then from there, I went on to The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave because it became available on Libby also. Um, it'd been on my holds list for ages and I could have gotten a physical copy of it from the library but sometimes I just prefer reading on my Kindle so I was just kind of waiting and filling it in with other books in the meantime. This one was a super quick read for me. I think I got through it in like two days. It wasn't quite as much as I feel like the hype was around it but I mean it was still a good read and it was pretty interesting. Her husband disappears so this woman is forced to care for her stepdaughter, deal with the aftermath of like her husband disappearing with her, and she's a teenager and she doesn't really like her very much, and the story like ends up very much not what you expect. <laughs> in case I didn't mention it already, I gave that one four stars also. And then The Girls in the Garden was about to 
leave Kindle Unlimited and I've been wanting to read a Lisa Jewell book for a while so I grabbed that one. I wish that one wouldn't have been the first one by her that I read because <laughs> I've heard some good things about some of her books but I did not like this one. The characters were very icky. I did not like any of them and you think the entire time you're reading the book that somebody is about to be let down off their very high horse in their community because they're not a decent person like everybody believes they are. The whole entire thing that happens that's the catalyst for the craziness in the book is is basically just teenagers being jerks and and it's so not what I was expecting and I just didn't like it. There was a lot of insinuation about like child molestation and like age of consent -y stuff with adults being inappropriate around kids and like the whole thing just kind of wasn't pleasant. So it was just kind of a big letdown to go through all of that only for it to be something very different than what you were expecting. I gave that one three stars. Just recently I read The Lost Apothecary. That was the one that was supposed to be for last month's book club but I didn't end up going. <laughs> So I really liked this one. I finish it in a couple of days again when I really like something and I'm into something. It doesn't take me very long to get through it. I really liked the back and forth between the two different stories and the fact that it kind of felt like a mystery but also it was just slightly magical just a little bit. I just added another one of hers to my want to read list. Um, I gave that one four stars. I probably could have given it five. I liked it enough that I probably could have given it five but it I don't know. It wasn't quite there. And then my last read was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I just finished that one two days ago. <laughs> I gave this one five stars. This one's probably my favorite one that I've read by her so far and it's got me really excited to read Happy Place which is on my to be read list. I just thought the story was cute and yet it was like enough depth to where it was still pretty interesting and once again it wasn't just like a cheesy romance but it was still entertaining and it was still slightly funny and I, I don't know I really like the characters in this one too. I would recommend that if you're gonna read Emily Henry you should probably read that one first because it's my favorite so far. <laughs> my currently reading list is a lot right now. I have three that I'm currently trying to get through and typically I try to keep it to one at a time but sometimes there are just some that I need to like set down and step away from for a bit and go to something else that's going to keep my interest and then come back to it later. The first one is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. This one was supposed to be a book club read. I have been trying to get through it since the end of March. I have not enjoyed it and I'm very close to the end if you can see like I'm not that far away from the end and I just cannot bring myself to finish it. Um, I don't like the characters in it. I don't really like the story very much. The only character that I kind of somewhat appreciated just left the story and I am not happy about that. <laughs> what was a very difficult read for me to get through is now going to be even harder for me to get through because now I don't even have that character to keep me interested in the story. That's a bit of a bummer. I'm gonna hopefully maybe try to get through it in the next like month or so even if I have to read like a chapter a day before I allow myself to read the book that I want to read. I don't like to put things away. Like I've already spent this much time reading this story so like I just need to make myself get through the rest of it so I can mark it off my list because I need to justify the amount of time that I spent on this so far. <laughs> For the opposite reason this one A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas is also on my currently reading and I'm avoiding reading it. You can see I've gotten a decent chunk into it. Uh, let's see what page am I on? 135. I'm on page 135. It's chapter 14. But this one is sitting unfinished on my nightstand for the opposite reason of tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and that is because I love these books and I love this world so much and this one felt exactly like the first one when I picked it up and I started reading it and the story is very different than I was expecting it to be based off of the ending of the first one but I'm still very invested. <laughs> I'm very invested in the characters and the world and I'm enjoying it so much that I don't want to get through all the books so fast that it's just over and then I don't have it anymore. I'm purposely kind of trying to work my way through this a little slower. I, I, I very much appreciate this series now that I'm reading it. <laughs> the 
the one I've been reading the last couple of days is a man called Uva. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Ova? Uva? I don't know. I think they made a wise choice. As annoying as it is to change the name for the movie so that people could actually understand how to pronounce it. Um, by Frederick Bachman. This one was kind of slow starting for me. I'm on page 96 right now. It's finally just kind of getting to the point where it's starting to keep my interest. So I'm gonna stick it out though because I've heard it's a really good book and I've heard the movie is also very good and I want to see the movie but I don't want to see the movie before I read the book. I'm going to stick it out. I will finish this one. Um, I have gotten like a third of the way through the book in less than a day so um, this is definitely going to get finished. I hope it gets better. Like I've heard it's really heartwarming and that it is good. It's just the, the beginning of it is very depressing. <laughs> Finally, I just kind of want to show what the next ones up are um, and hopefully I'll have these finished before the next time I do another one of these so that I can talk about these a little bit. So the next one that's probably going to be read is um, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman and hopefully I have the heart to read it when I'm done with the other one because I've heard this one is also fairly depressing because of a triggering event that happens in it but I've also heard that it's a really good book so I've been wanting to read his for a while um, a couple of friends of mine have read quite a few of his and have really enjoyed them so it's just the stories themselves are hard for me to read just because they're kind of difficult situations in some of them so um, they're definitely not light reads. Then the next one on my list is All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. Um, I listened to Crime Junkie for a while, not a huge fan of the podcast, but I do like true crime and I heard this one was good. I haven't read a uh, nonfiction true crime in a while and the last one that I read was that one that I only gave three stars because I didn't really like it. So next one that I am really excited to read is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I've heard some pretty good things about this one already so far too. Uh, it just came out last month, April, May, somewhere around there. I'm not great with release dates. <laughs> if it weren't for Goodreads, I wouldn't know when anything is coming out anymore since I don't work at the library anymore. This one, I feel like is a little bit longer than hers typically are. Maybe not. It's roughly 400 pages. I feel like that's more than typical. I've read all of her other ones now, so uh, this is the last one to add, and I've heard good things about it, so I'm pretty excited to read this one. I also heard it's probably a good summer read, which based off of the photo on the cover is probably a good, good thought. It's about a couple who have to keep up appearances for their friends because they are not together anymore, and they haven't told their friends yet, so... This one should be interesting. It's a little bit different than the other ones. I thought Beach Read and Book Lovers were kind of similar stories. They were both in like the book slash publishing world and they were both like enemies to lovers stories and so this one feels a little bit different than that and considering those are the last two of hers that I read I'm excited to see what this one is. I, I think I'm really gonna like her overall. I think she's probably gonna end up one of my favorite authors. So that's fun because I honestly haven't, other than Riley Sager, I have not picked up any books in the last probably 10 years that I've read that are like, oh my gosh, this person is going to be my favorite author. I'm hoping to change that over the next like year or so now that I'm actually reading a decent amount again. And then if I get to it in the next couple of months, because honestly, I'm hoping I... I'm hoping to finish a book a week. That's my goal. It's a very ambitious goal for me because while I can typically get through a book in like three to four days if I'm really enjoying it, it's the in-between time between like leaving a book off and then like picking up a new one that's the hard part for me. It takes me a while sometimes. And I really want to finish the Akatar series too, so I don't know. I don't know if this one is uh, gonna end up getting picked up, but I, I would like to read this one. It's been on my shelf since last year. I picked it up at the bookstore when I was there. I think I bought it when it was still pretty new, but it's just been sitting on my bookshelf for a while, and I mean, it's June, it's summer again. This one would probably be a good one to take with me to the beach, I think. I'm planning on making a trip to the beach, at least for my birthday weekend, so maybe this is the one that I'll take with me when we go there. Yeah, so feel like that was a lot. I'm hoping to do another one of these after the summer because I feel like I'm gonna have the most time over the next few months to read than I will for the rest of the year. So we'll see how many I can get through. Like I said, my goal is typically like to read one book a week. That's my like ambitious like 
typically where I would love to be eventually at some point but realistically as long as I get through at least one to two books a month I'm happy with that. <laughs> Last year I think I ended up with 14. This year I set myself a goal for my reading challenge for 2023 was to read 24 books so two books per month and I'm currently one book ahead of schedule so hopefully I can keep up the steam there. <laughs> I've already read in six months almost how many I read for the entire year last year so that makes me feel pretty good. I get a lot of my books at either the local library or our local bookstore. I really love our local bookstore because I found out the last time that I went in there that if you bring back the books that you've already read they will give you a credit to purchase more books there and they also sell used books too so like the lost apothecary i got there for like six dollars i think there are quite a few that i have that i'm obviously not going to read again so i'm excited to like put together a small haul at the end of the summer and take it down there and see how much they'll give me so i can restock my bookshelf while i love a barnes and noble i typically try to stay away from it because first of all they're very expensive and secondly it's kind of overwhelming for me to walk into a Barnes & Noble because there are so many options. Yeah, I try to get as many of my books as I can on like Libby. I like reading from my Kindle now because I have one of those like stands that you can move around and you can clamp onto like a table. So I clamped that onto my nightstand and I saw it at one point that Caitlin from Caitlin's Corner had posted that she had this page turner thing for her Kindle and so I ended up buying one too and the first time that I tried it I ended up laying in bed for like four hours reading that day. So sometimes when like my hands are hurting me and it's difficult to hold a book or like my back is bothering me and it's hard for me to like sit in a contorted position to actually like hold a book and read it. I will just grab that and I'll pick a Kindle book. I will like roll up under the covers and like put my arms and stuff under the covers and everything because you can, as long as the remote is pointed towards it, it will work even if it's under the covers. So I usually will just like bundle all the way up under my bed and get nice and comfy and literally hang the Kindle directly in front of my face. <laughs> and then I can just spend so long reading, just ages, which is honestly nice because that's been a big part of my motivation to finish some of the things that I've started. Support your local libraries. They're fantastic. If you don't know what Libby is, you should definitely check it out. It's just like a really nice way to like not even necessarily have to go visit the library and still be able to read books from them and support them in a way. I know for me, like it's nice to know that like if I've run out of things or which will never happen. I have so many books on my bookshelf that I haven't touched yet. But <laughs> if I ever just am like interested in something to read and I'm not sure what to read, like I can just pull my Kindle out of my purse or out of my nightstand and be like, okay, what's available on Libby right now? And then be able to pretty much find something that I'd be interested in reading. Kindle Unlimited is one that like I just signed up for not that long ago, but I'm not utilizing it as much as I thought I would so I might cancel that. It was nice to have when they did the three month promo and it was way cheaper but I don't know if I use it enough to pay 10 bucks or 12 bucks a month for it now that I think is what it just went up to so I mean there are so many books available on Libby that if I want to read something on Kindle I'll just pick a book from Libby typically but if you have any recommendations I would love to know because I am definitely looking for more stuff like Emily Henry. I think Christina Lauren is probably going to be my next choice. I know Riley Sager has another one coming out soon so that'll probably be on my list at some point too. Nonfiction, mystery fiction, and romantic comedies are typically my thing. Although romantic comedies I haven't really delved too much into recently so it's been fun kind of getting to read some that aren't, I don't know. I just remember the ones I used to read in high school were like terrible. They were so bad. <laughs> the stories were really bad. I need like a substantial story and not just a sickly romance. I'm posting this mostly for accountability and to maybe kind of toot my own horn a little bit as far as how much I've actually been able to read over the last year. Yeah, anyway, I hope you have a good week and I will see you later. Bye!